Hello guys, welcome back to another video of Dylan Hex. So today is a little bit weird again because recently I've been thinking about upgrading the memory of my calculator, the TI-82, which is sound weird that guy in 2021 upgrading his own RAM of his calculator. But there's a reason. When I want to tear this thing down to do modification, I have been planning right now. I'm planning to do a screen replacement and battery replacement with a lithium ion and some kind of boost converter. And it reminds me that every time I took this thing off, I need to take off the battery com completely. And when I do that, I lost all of the settings and program that I written into this. And by the way, I can actually transfer the program to computer, but my ST link, oops, it's not ST link. My TI link is not done yet, so I need to find another way. And one thing popped up into my mind is, is something called FRAM. It's, um, it is a combination between EEPROM and SRAM. So you got EEPROM, it is something that really slow, but with the trade-off that you can actually store data without using power. I mean, I mean you use power, but when there's no power, the data is retained, is still there. So this is called a non-volatile memory. But in the other end, the SRAM is really fast, but when you disconnect power, everything is gone. So to solve that problem, there's a, something called, I said earlier, FRAM or ferromagnetic uh, RAM, something blah, blah, blah. So this is the ship itself, the FM18W08 that I will replace in this calculator. Spoiler alert, it didn't go well at all. First start with tearing down, so I'm gonna tear this thing a little bit. And gonna pry on the back, and this is the problem part, the backup battery. And then we're gonna take that the battery out. Also, we're gonna use a pry tool to get all of the AAA battery off on the compartment. Unscrew two screw on the back, and then yeah, carefully using the prior, gently prying out the plastic clip on all sides. This take a pain in the ass to quite a while, and we get inside. So this is inside. I have some modifications. So just unplug it, do some unscrew here, and two on the bottom. And we are here. So this is the SRAM that we're gonna replace with FRAM right there exactly exact there so let's zoom in a bit right there so no more just unscrew the screen carefully lift it up and unscrew the screw underneath and all around the perimeter and just use some piring tool to pry to pry tool sorry get this out and there's some adhesive, so you might need some force to pull it out. So, and here it is, the board itself sit ni nicely. And that is the part of SRAM. So, next is gonna be desoldering. So, here we are. So, just put some of the flaps around the pin of the SRAM on the both sides. Gently put this around, and then some hot air to melt the solder, obviously, and just some tweezer to get the ship out from the board. It's gonna take quite a while, but the solder is really easy to melt. So yeah, done. And I'm gonna do some little cleanup of the pad. So I move the ship away. Then do some little cleanup, retin the pad, and some flux on them to make sure that the solder block is looks nice and no oxidation. And I'm gonna put the F RAM and then gonna re reflow it. So just make it make sure it's aligned up properly. 
and just blast them with a the hot gun. It take quite a while. Some jiggle, jiggle because yeah, the pet is actually smaller. I mean bigger than the leg of this one, the width of it. So need to be some kind of we go and jiggle and just press on it so it can have better connection. Just some thinning again. Make sure that it's properly connected to the pad. And we are done. We are done. Look nice. And now this is the problem. Just carefully put the battery in and turn it on and everything seems weird entire screen is gold black and i cannot change the contrast too i tried to do it as you can see so yeah it's it's go weird okay after that well i'm trying to figure out what happened and i spent a whole day trying to debug the thing and i still don't have the i still don't have the actual problem that why it's not working with FRAM so there's some possibility that one of the so I take a look at the schematic so I took the reference from TI-85 and the part of the the part of the power stuff that dealing about the backup battery and main battery is kind of weird and I have no idea at all why TI uh, engineer do that, but it could be or it could not be the problem. But before I actually know the, the I mean, before today, before this recording, I create not kind of create. I design the, the it's kind of the carrier board, the daughter board that will replace the SRAM. It's with solder on the pad. And then there's gonna be FRAM on the top, and there's gonna be STM8 microcontroller to capture the address bus changes to generate the CS pin blah blah blah. But it turns out that the FRAM require the different, way different um, CS uh, chip select control when compared to the SRAM. So SRAM you can hold down the CS pin for any time that you want to. To write so like you hold it down and you you only need to change the address um, what's it called address but bit or something at just the address that you want to write to you just change that so but but when FRAM is a different story you need to pulse the CS pin because some kind of engineering things going on so that that made them need to pulse the CS and frankly speaking, this is quite a stupid idea to use FRAM with this um, TI-82 because back then the 90s, um, the memory is really expensive and when we're talking about flash memory is way expensive or not even exist or maybe in, you know, still in the lab but I really appreciate the person behind the TI-82 and other lineup, he kind of used a really similar um, way that game cartridge does. So he used SRAM to store data, and there's backup battery. But main difference is the battery. Oops, the SRAM that used in this thing is shared between um, the system and user. So it's pretty much like you have the hard disk drive, but you need to power it entire time to make it work and to ensure that they'll lose data so if I replace FRAM it's kind of, it, it's kind of trade off you know it, I don't require a battery to back up but it's working as main memory it needs to write really quickly and it's gonna de degrade quick but I think the FRAM can withstand that because well the FRAM is actually target to replace SRAM in, you know I read the application sheet somewhere from Cypress but I don't think that it's gonna last long but 
anyway, until then, I probably modify this thing and put the F1C100S my um, Linux board into it. Today, I actually take a look closer at the SRAM. I use the Arduino as a logic analyzer to capture the logic um, thingy stuff going on. And it turns out that the CS pin is actually pulsed. And I also do some testing with 5 volt, not the AAA battery that going up to about 6 volt. And uh, it's, it's kind of weird that it can turn on and it can work properly with FRAM. But when I put back together and I use the battery, it just refused to work. So there must be something really weird here. Also, this project is gonna be a long haul because, well, this is just a part one and I can't even make this thing work yet. So just stay tuned for the next part because I, I really seriously working on this thing right now because if I can replace the FRAM, it's gonna be really nice thing to have on this calculator because I don't need to buy that CR1616 um, battery that I wait for two two months to arrive from China so yeah just another failed project again but not yet I won't give up on this one yet so stick around for the next video so you don't forget to like and subscribe my channel that helped me a lot I appreciate all of you guys so thanks for watching this video I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time bye bye